Okay, and welcome back, students. We're taking math for business and finance and math applications, and we are working on the chapter 10 uh, drill problems, the odd number problems that were assigned to you as part of the assignment in your digital study guide. So let's move on and get to the next slide, which has the problems, and let me get my ink pen here. My pen. All right, and here we go. Okay, so uh, problems 10.1 and 10.3. And we're going to calculate the simple interest and maturity value for the following problems. And I'm going to round to the nearest cent as needed. Okay, so problem 10-1. Uh, the principal is $17,000, and my interest rate is 2.5%. Uh, remember, that's an annual interest rate, and the time frame is... 18 months okay so we want to know what the simple interest is and we also want to know what the maturity value all right so let's see here I have um, 17,000 is my principal and I'm going to multiply that times my interest rate um, two and a half percent um, as a 2.5 percent or it would be one two Put the decimal there, so it's 0 0.025 in the decimal form. Okay. So that's 0 0.025. And then for the time frame, <clears throat> since this eight this is 18 months, okay, and I'm going to put that over 12. Now uh, there's 12 months in a year. Now remember the interest rate here is an annual interest rate. And you do kind of want to keep things in the same time frames. So uh, that's why I'm dividing by 12 here, because there's 12 months in a year. Right? And so now this is just a matter of doing the math. Okay? Remember, 17,000 is over 1, and you know, 0 0.025 is over 1. So all I need to do is just the math across the top. You multiply across the numerators, and then just divide by the denominator. All right, so I take 17,000 times 0 0.025 times 18 and that gives me uh, that gives me 7650 and of course across the denominators 1 times 1 times 12 is 12 and when I divide 7650 divided by 12 that gives me 635.50 637.50 I'm sorry as my simple interest Six thousand six hundred and thirty-seven fifty. Okay. Now, as far as the maturity value is concerned, right? Um, remember, the maturity value is the maturity value is equal to the principal. Oops. It's equal to the principal plus the interest. All right. So I have seventeen thousand plus the uh, 637.50 as the interest, and that gives me 17,637.50 as my maturity value. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Erase that and do problem 10-3. Basically, it's the same way, the same steps. So I have 20,000, and I'm multiplying that by 0 0.0675, right? That's six and three quarters of a percent in a digital format. And I'm multiplying that times um, nine months over 12, right? Remember, this is annual, so we're dividing by 12, which is annual. And then all it is is just doing the math across, right? 20,000 times 0 0.0675 times 9 is 1,000, I'm sorry, 12,150 divided by 12. So we divide that by 12. And mm, that gives us 1,000. $12 and 50 cents in interest. So that's 101250. And to find our maturity value, we're taking that interest of 1,112.50 1, 
and adding it to the 20,000 in principle. So we end up with $21,012. Oops. Get this right, Jim. <laughs> that gives us $21,012.50. All right, as our maturity value. Okay. 10-5. Calculate the following using ordinary interest. Now remember, ordinary interest is the 360 days as far as our time is concerned, right? It's the exact number of days of days divided by 360. So, I have a principal of um, $585, my interest rate is 9%, and I'm borrowing it on June 5th, and I'm repaying it on December 15th. Okay, so what we need to consider here is how many days are there are between June 5th and December 15th, and if you need to... Um, as a visual aid, you can draw a timeline, right, and label this June 5th, and label this December 15th, and then say, okay, here's June, you know, 30 days hat September, April, June, and November, so there's 30 days there. So that would be July would be 731, August is 30, whoop. No, July is 30. No, July has 31. August has 31. September has 30. October has 31. November has 30. Okay, and now you can start doing the math. Okay. You can say here's from 5 to 30 is 25. This is 31. Well, actually, let me. This is 25. This is 31. This is 31. This is 30. 31. Uh, October, November is 30. And for the December 15. Add those all together, and you actually end up with um, 193 days. Okay, now the other alternative that you have is remember you can use the Julian calendar. Okay, and you know that uh, is in the in the textbook. That calendar is in the textbook uh, in one of the previous chapters. And in using the Julian calendar, well, June 5th is day number 156, and December 15th is uh, 349. And so when you subtract one from the other, you end up with 193 days. So that's a, another way of doing it. Now, yeah, you'd have to go into the textbook and look at that calendar. And, uh, you know, obviously that was a lot faster than the way I hit um, create the, the number line, but you know sometimes the number line, well the timeline um, is, you know gives a, especially on shorter periods of time, is it gives me a better and quicker representation. But when I'm looking out over so many months here, you know ob uh, obviously using the Julian calendar is a better idea. So um, the exact time here was 193 days. And now we want to find our interest. So we had $585 times 0 0.09 as our percentage. Okay. And we're multiplying that by 193 days, our exact number of days right here, over the 360 because we're using ordinary interest. And again, you know, it's a matter of doing the math. Now, um, Notice that I multiply 
the uh, the thought just occurred to me. I take the and multiply the numerators across, and then divide by the denominator. Okay. Now it um, if I take the 585 times 0 0.09 times 193, I end up with um, $10,161.45. And then, of course, 1 times 1 times 360 is 360. Right? Some people get a little squeamish or uncomfortable with using a large number like this 10,000. Okay? Remember, the other way that you can do this is you can take the 193 and divide it by 360, and you end up with 0 0.5361111 goes on forever. And then take that number and multiply it by 585 and 9%. Um, it's going to end up being uh, slightly less accurate. And as you can see, by having that repetitive number there, it's not optimal. So try to always just, especially since you're using a calculator, you multiply across with the numerators and you get the 10,161. And visually, you can see 1 times 1 is 360. So when you have the 10,161.45 in your calculator, all you need to do need to do is just divide by the uh, 460. I'm sorry, 360. Divide by 360, and you end up with uh, that equals uh, 2823. Okay, so that's how much interest there is for that period of time, 28, 23. And then, of course, the maturity value is the $28.23 of principal plus uh, of interest plus the principal of 585. And that gives you $613.23. $613.23. Okay. And it's, as you can see, it's basically the same as doing problems one and three, principal times the rate. And in this case here, we had to calculate out the time, which was over 360 because we're being told ordinary interest. But the process ends up being the same thing. I calculated the interest, add it to the principal, and I end up with my maturity value over here. All right. So I'm going to stop here and pick up with uh, drill problem 10-7 in the next video.